Hey everybody, this is Melissa Hood and welcome to Tame Your Brain O. We're going to be blasting off this morning in the spirit. Looking forward to seeing what God is going to show us today. Glad you could join me for your coffee break. Well, I think we're get, I think we're there. How's everybody doing? I haven't done this in a while. I uh, have, I think I've, I don't think I missed last week. I think it was last Sunday when I did this. So I wanted to welcome you to my podcast. It's Tame Your Braino. Thank you for joining me on your coffee break. I've got a rocking word for everybody today. I think it's really going to encourage you. And I think you're really, really going to be excited for where uh, God is taking you. I know a lot of you are tired. And I know that God is really pushing you beyond your limits. So before, before I go further, uh, let's pray. Oh, I'm getting all tongue-tied over my... Blah, blah, blah. Okay, do that right. So let's pray. Let's see what God has to say. Okay? So Father God, I just thank you for today. I thank you, Father, for who you are. I invite you here, Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to use my mind, will, and emotions. Father, use the fivefold giftings on my life. And I ask you to speak loudly to every heart, every ear listening. I pray, Father God, that you just speak with clarity and with such precision and acuteness, Father God, acute accuracy, that every person listening to this Lord, within the sound of my voice would know that they're in the presence of the Lord. And Lord, that this is you speaking to their heart. I release your angels into their atmospheres, into my atmosphere. With Daniel 6.12, Daniel 6.22, angels. Thank you, God, for this saying that. And um, I bless you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. With Daniel 6.12, Daniel 6.22, angels. Amen. So, before we go any further, before any of you choke... On the atmosphere that you're currently walking in you choke on the pressure in that atmosphere God wants you to start praying Philippians uh, 11 1 through 13 excuse me Philippians 4 1 through 13 um, and it's that you quickly adapt adaptability into this new place and we need to start actually praying that every time we hit a new level because of the level of fatigue we need to start also praying for the second wind of Samson Okay, the second wind that Samson got when his hair had been cut off, he'd had his eyes plucked out by the Philistines. And the Lord says a lot of people in this hour are having a hard time understanding where they're at and in the way that they should walk. But let me remind you, I'm going to give you, I'm going to start uh, citing some prophets here. I am an information gatherer, and so God shows me big picture by putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. Chuck Pierce said starting Monday, that was this last Monday, through October 20th, we were going to experience a lot of confusion and a, a very difficult time hearing. So the only way to overcome that is to draw super close to the Lord through praise, high praise, staying close to the prophets. God says if you listen to the prophets, you'll be blessed. And so we want to stay very, very close to the prophets, Lord. And the other thing is, is that we need to understand, too, that God is retaking the gates. He's to be taking the gates on the mountain level. That was happening last night through Dr. Mark Sharona. So his group is indicative. God is no respecter of persons. So what he does for one, he does for all. And the very fact that you're sitting here listening to this podcast tells me that you're moving forward. And you're looking for that next step in your destiny. Okay, so you're right where you need to be. There's no uh, fear where you're at at all. Um, there should be no fear at all because you're right where you need to be. Um, a lot of people I'm noticing are very, very tired. They're just super, they're thinking, oh my God, is this ever going to stop? No, put that thought away and quit looking back to the things of the past. Thank you, Lord, for reminding me about that. Pardon me. Because the past, your past gifts, the, the level that they operated on, the way things used to be will never come back like they were back then. We're doing a brand new thing through the Lord on our lives. He's doing a brand new thing through us. We are entering into the wealth transfer. I know you've said it for years, but this is really the mother load of it this year. This year. And Kenneth Copeland said that if you could believe for it in 2016, God says with Romans 10.10, 10, if I say it with my mouth and believe it in my heart, I will have whatsoever I say. You can have it. You can have it if you can speak it and believe it and standing. Because we live by a season of seed plus time equals harvest. And so if you can outlast the test of time or the devil that's coming at you through uh, time, which you will because it's going to manifest this year because they're going to be manifesting very fast. I'm already seeing it in my own life. I'll pray something. It'll come to pass within an hour. 
I'm not kidding. Things are coming to pass that fast. So God has been establishing us. And a lot of us are right on the precipice. We've just stepped into that new place in the spirit for our own destinies. We're just getting ready to launch. And the Lord says, get ready, baby. Buckle up. This is going to be a white knuckle ride, but you're going to like it because you're going to see that I did a good thing. So I'm getting really excited. I don't know about you, but I'm really, really excited. So I want to take you back. Um, my quiet time this week was very, very interesting, but it was very, very powerful in that the Lord was talking to the Israelites about when he brought them out of Egypt. Because they brought them out the first time and they were faced with death on three sides, which means they didn't have too many options for escape. But God, and God made a way of escape through the narrow pathway. A very narrow way, which he's talking about a narrow way that usually means that he's shucking things off. He's getting things off of our vessel so we can go and fit through that place. So if you're not willing to get free, this is not the place to be screwing around in the spirit with the Lord and saying, well, I've done this for years. Surely it won't bother God now. Are you kidding me? We're operating at really, really high levels in the spirit now. The closer we get with Christ... God can't dwell where sin is, okay? So he wants you to make more room for him in your vessel, okay? He wants you to get rid of the things that so easily beset you. Let him take them. Let him deliver you of them so you can operate in higher levels of love because God is love. So the closer we walk with love, we walk closer to the goodness. Well, God draws good things to himself. So you want more of him in your vessel because that's the way you're going to enter into destiny. Like draws like. Do you not see that? That's what he's doing right now in this season. Um, but they didn't have a way of escape. So they, they, were, they were faced with the, the Dead Sea on one side, scorpion paths on another, which means there are there were deadly scorpions there, and then the wilderness on another. Well, who wants to go back into the wilderness? I don't want to go back into the wilderness. So, um, <clears throat> thank you, Father. He's got so much in my spirit. I'm so full right now that um, I have so much to say. So I need, Lord orchestrate my footsteps in this word right now help me to say exactly what you once said lord and minister to your people um but the remnant lord says in my quiet time he said there were a few people left in the villages of israel until deborah arose as a mother for israel god's raising up the women in this hour Go! <laughs> i know that sounds biased um but he is, he's raising up a lot of women commanders. He calls them leaders, but also commanders. And the reason he's raising them up, because a lot of women are have been raised up underneath mantles that men should have carried. This is not to dog men. This is just to say that in those families that those women had those mantles placed on them. I'm one of them. Um, people in their bloodline didn't step up. So it was passed down to the next vessel that was readily available. And God doesn't care if it's a male or female. He said, hey, boom, take this. Go do it. That's what he said to Gideon. Here, I said it. You go do it. So that's what he's doing. So a lot of us women, a lot of us have, have been having to grow up into these high-powered mantles of anointing. And we're having to learn to operate in the tools that go with that mantle. And it's been a long, hard road. It's been hard for a lot of us. I mean... We, we have struggled in a lot of dimensions, but it doesn't make it any less of a struggle than, say, another person walked through, whether you're male or female. We've all had a long, hard road getting up these mountains. And so, okay, tell me when to say that, please. Hold that. Keep that. You said you're able to keep that, which I haven't trusted you until that day. Keep that thought, Lord. Um, so he's waking up the Deborah. He said, wake up, Deborah. <laughs> chop, chop, wake up. He wants us to wake up. Wake up, because we've got to wake up the warriors. And so, if he sends in a woman, and God's not dogging a woman, but he did send a woman. Um, oh, I hear you. He sent in a woman, but the problem is, is not all the warriors wanted to move with her. Not all the warriors wanted to serve underneath her. Not all people will believe that women can serve in, in leadership, even in this hour. Because some, of the, some members of the church are still sick. So, they're wondering why... Uh, it says, uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So they're deferring their own destinies. They're deferring their own blessings. When we refuse to get free from things, from old mindsets, 
from old generational cursings, you name it, spirits of religion, Jezebel, Ahab, especially those are your first top three. Those made the top three list. Then you hinder your own blessing because that means you can't go higher into the spirit of the Lord. You can't climb higher on your mountain. You can't enter into fullness. And I'm sorry, my dog's sitting right outside crying. I'm fixing to go move her. So um, you can't go higher though. You can't go higher. So we have to be willing to be willing to get free. Okay. So God says he's raising up women commanders. And he says, march on with courage, my soul. March on. Those are the words for these hours. And what's so funny about that is that just two weeks ago, the Lord kept telling me that same exact verbiage. March on, baby. March on. Get in your position and continue to march. You're doing just fine. You're, you're right where you need to be. You're in position for your destiny to launch. So you need to continue marching. And the Lord says, may all your enemies die like Caesarea. Like and may those who love you rise. This is key. I'm going to go back to the thing about Caesarea. For those of you who aren't aware of who that was. May you rise, you warriors, you part of the remnant who've been obedient thus far. Like the sun. S-U-N, but really S-O-N. In all its power. That means you're rising with the sun, Jesus, in his fullness. That is rocking cool. That means we're, we're entering into resurrection power. That's just what happened to the um, apostles, uh, the disciples, excuse me, right before they were anointed as apostles. They came up in full resurrection power. Um, and what comes into my mind, too, which I don't understand, I believe that's also why Jesus showed himself um, in, the, in the Mount of Transfiguration with uh he had Moses beside him, and I think he, I forgot who else was beside him, but it was, he was in his fullness, in his full glory, in his full height. And he was preparing him. This is the way. Walk ye in it. You're heading up the right mountain. Here, look, I brought you up on the Mount of Transfiguration because you are being transfigured. I wanted to show you what it looks like, what it tastes like, what it feels like in this moment. Because when you're in the full presence of God, you'll never forget it. We never forget it. So God's showing us what love looks like, what it behaves like, what true love looks like, what it behaves like, what it really feels like again. But because that's the way we used to walk in years, like 30 years ago. And people have so gotten away from true love and they're labeling it what they think it might look like because they don't remember because it's been so long. Some hearts are so barren and so dry that they've gotten sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. So they're waiting on the presence. So they can enter into destiny. But before you can enter into the presence, you've got to allow him to fill you up with his love first. He has to fill you up with himself. God is love so that you can learn to cover. Love covers a multitude. It covers a multitude of sin, but it covers not hidden sin. It covers a multitude. And that's another issue. Thank you. Um, hidden sin. Let's get on this topic. A lot of people have been doing things for years and years thinking that God's just going to overlook it in this hour. And God says, no, 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 baby, not in this hour. I'm fixing to start using the prophets because he said a lot of good leaders, great leaders, and a lot of good people have lost, haven't been spared because churches haven't been using their prophets to expose the hidden sins. And it's not to be unloving. Love gets tough sometimes. And I know you're thinking, well, you know, Missy, you're a little you're a little bit more harsh or you're a little bit more truth oriented you want truth prophets there are truth prophets and there are mercy prophets this usually comes from mercy i love mercy we need mercy but you need truth you need balance we need to be balanced in this hour but we need to allow the truth prophets to come into these churches and expose so that the church can get cleansed and get cleansed and get purified i can't talk but get purified. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So you want to let him do this. You want to, the prophets aren't going to be holding back from here on out, guys. If you're operating in this stuff in secret, you're going to be exposed with Ephesians 5.11. This is your warning. This serves as a warning. So, and the Lord says, now it's not the time to quit praying. I don't care how tired you are. I don't care how forlorn you are i don't care how discouraged you are the lord says if you're experiencing fear doubt unbelief discouragement or depression those are the fines five signs of witchcraft you're getting hit with witchcraft break it off and continue to march up your mountain the joy of the lord is your strength 
Joy is where you get your strength. From where does my help come from? From joy. Releasing joy unspeakable. Getting into praise and high praise. Knowing to utilize the tools of the Spirit. Staying connected to the right people. Staying in the right flow with the right streams. So you can be encouraged at all times. And knowing, being in the here and in the know. Knowing what's going on around you. Okay? So now is not the time to quit praying. But God says, pardon me, a lot of the battles that many of us have been facing, God is fixing Lord says, I'm fixing to contend with those that contend with you. But people, even in the body, that keep choosing their own way and doing what's right in their own eyes. God says, I'm fixing to turn up the full throttle power and I'm fixing to start contending. So he's basically saying, you better back up, Jackson, because he's coming. He's, his presence is coming on these vessels and he's whoo! And he's fixing to start using us as vessels of God, using you as a vessel of the Most High God on the top of the mountain. The Lord's been talking to me for four days now about standing on top of the mountain. He goes, I'm fixing to put you there. He goes, but you've got to learn to adapt to the pressure in this place with those leaders. He goes, you thought you could handle it at first. He goes, and then some of you started going back into some old behavior patterns and some of you addictions and things like that. And the Lord says, no. He says, I still call you friend. He goes, put it down. Don't choose that over me in this hour. Choose me. Choose life. Don't choose death. Choose me so you can stand on the top of your mountain. And then pray. Philippians. Hold on. Let me make sure I've got that right. I think it's Philippians 1 through 13. But before I say that. I always want to make sure I'm hearing right. Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Excuse me. Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Adaptability. You want to pray that you quickly, 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 quickly adapt in this place of the Spirit so you don't choke on the pressure. Okay? So when you do that, you're going to start moving and shaking. And God's, God's been having me play this crazy uh, chef game on my phone. And I thought I was just praying it, cause I, or playing it because it was entertaining. The Lord says it's a multitasking game. How well do you multitask? How well do you? And how many of you, by the way, exercise? That's been something big the Lord's been having me do. He's got me losing weight right now, trying to adapt to this level of pressure where I'm at so that I can do what he's called me to do. It's the same with you. Also, exercise is a good way to fight stress. Eating right and exercise. you got to take care of your vessel, guys. There's only one you. Okay? So, Last but not least, the Lord says, I'll turn the sins of the evil people back onto them. He said, I was there, the Lord says, I was there every day, meaning he was in the temple every day. So he, he's going back, basically. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was telling the people, now it's not, I'll tell the disciples, now is not the time to stop praying. But they were exhausted from grief, so he found them sleeping. The disciples were exhausted. And so they were grieved. Because they kind of sensed the darkness that was coming, but they didn't know how to combat it. And God goes, I do. I know how to combat it. I knew how to combat it then, and I know how to combat it now. So for all of you who are getting all caught up in grief, and you're, you're oh my God, oh woe is me, woe, woe is this nation. The Lord says, I'm not through with America yet. Stop it. Stop it. I'm getting ready to overcome. And he goes, and I'm bringing you into oneness, unity and community, like a straight arrow going forth and you're going to do this together and if you can keep that mindset unity of mind psalms 133 1 and judges 20 verses 11 he's calling in the angelic the holy angels in the third heavens from the holy angels in the earth and they're joining forces and if we can continue down that path revival will break out because there are many hearts that have grown sick and they don't know the way in which they're to walk but the lord went on to say i was with you every day before when you were walking in darkness but this is your moment the time this is key when the power of darkness reigns but it's not you're ruling and reigning don't you see the darkness thinks it is and that's why the devil's kicking up such a stir because he doesn't want to give up his power but God says oh no 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 the higher you go the harder you fall and the devil thought that he was going to place himself on God's throne and that he'd almost taken it the Lord says Nothing unholy will ever touch my throne as he knocks him back down through God's people. You're sitting at his right hand. Use your authority. Use the angels. 
But God says, I, when I leave, you will do even greater things than I. That's what he told his disciples right before he was resurrected. Okay? So we're right there. So this is the final thing I want to leave you with. He says, without oxen, a stable stays clean. That means there's nobody there to do the work. So there's work to be done. And he says, but you need a strong ox for a large harvest. God's bringing us all together as that one ox to plow the field so that many hearts can come back to Christ in America. God bless you, man. I want you to know... I am praying for you. I I love you deeply. If you need anything for prayer or anything, please contact me at memoirs of an ADHD mind at gmail.com. Check up with you later. Bye-bye.